for game number two. Spinu on the blue side this time. And what will they do on the blue side? Uh, taking out that Kalista now, of course, we probably won't see that LeBlanc ban coming from SK Telecom. Cassiopeia still removed. You know, Faker is playing this game, and there's the Maokai. So not changing up too much for Spinu. LeBlanc ban this time by Spenu themselves, but they're not going to have to take out Kalista more than likely. Yep, Gracchus. being on the blue side, they might try to uh, take advantage of that. And SKT not wanting to give away that Gragas, so just taking it out of the lineup altogether. Well, they're trying to get Rek'Sai for themselves, and they're forcing Spenu into a position where they're either going to have to first pick the Rek'Sai or just give it up in the first round of the draft on that red side. So, nice strategy so far. We could see the Rek'Sai ban coming in, possibly, if they want to leave the Gnar up this time around, and there it is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Bengi also did show some good games in Gragas too, uh, overseas, but still seems to prefer that Rek'Sai at times, and the Rek'Sai therefore will be banned out. And will the last ban be a Kalista ban from SKG? Or are they gonna try and bait out the Kalista and then play Urgot into it, would be the next question. That's uh, true, that is Something an that we've seen teams do from time to time, but nope, not going to take that one and said they don't want to play against that Kalista. So what will the first pick be right here? Nar, Hecarim, possibly a jungler. Um, could early pick something like a Zir if Sasin is comfortable on that champion, considering that they are going to have to pick their mid before Faker anyway. Yeah. I mean, Cassiopeia is banned, so... You still got to be worried, though. When Pawn tried to first pick that Azir, we did see in fact, the Kassadin counter counterpick coming in from Faker That's in the finals, true. the first time that a Korean player ever used new Kassadin. That's very also true. I should Faker. actually, a Korean player in Korea. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we have to we have to clarify that now. Because <laughs> certainly they're everywhere. Because <laughs> certainly Pawn played it a whole bunch in the LPL for sure. Uh, considering taking that Nunu, but yeah, I don't I don't think it's that high priority that you steal it away when Sejuani is available. You might as well just be aware of the Nunu coming in from Bengi. Will Bengi go for the Nunu, though? Kind of does seem to be his fallback plan once a lot of these popular junglers are taken away. I think you should play Vi. Vi. His Vi was really good. It was good back in the day. It's time for the Vi resurgence. <laughs> well, maybe he's thinking about it. Sticking his tongue out, he's like, Vi, yes. Nope, he's actually going to play Eve. He's like, I lost to it. <laughs> I will show the rest of the Korean teams the power. <laughs> well, uh, most likely we'll see a jungle pick here. And probably a uh, top pick, maybe an AD carry pick. Oh, actually just wanted to secure that Alistar. Well, it really oh. opens up the Urgot play that they like to do. And Wolf has been so good on that Alistar recently. Of course, a lot of bans from that Alistar at MSI. So Alistar, Nunu. Going for that ultra tanky SK Telecom style that we've grown to know and be bored by in the early game. <laughs> yeah, they're really bringing the tank meta to full throttle here as much as they can. And Zasin, uh, I don't, I don't know if you really feel the need to first pick Vladimir. I mean, I guess, like you said, you'll have to first pick it anyway. So if you're gonna do it, might as well do it confidently. That's a champion that's really punishable in lane, however. So yeah. I wouldn't be quite so eager to take the Vladimir early on. Yes, and the Velkons. Much less punishable, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a knockup and a slow. Gotta give that to him. Do you? Do you have to give that to him? I think Riot gave that to him. <laughs> okay. I didn't have to. Riot took care of that for me. So, see, uh, yeah, like you mentioned, I think Sasin might as well select his mid laner. Uh, early if he wants to, but at the same time, of course, you do have to maybe consider their top laner uh, and their AD carry. They're going to go ahead and secure that Sivir. Sivir Nautilus looking for a very strong bottom lane, not wanting to give the Sivir away to empower SK Telecom in the mid game instead. And I really like that Spinner picked that Sivir up because they were so good at collapsing onto SK Telecom in the last game with that speed boost from Lulu that they found a different way to do it this time around. Bang, thinking about picking the Corky into the Sivir for some extra punch in terms of uh, Siege, but they don't have really good synergy with Nunu yet, so are they going to go ahead and pick an Azir for Faker just to get that Blood Boil a little more useful in the late game? 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something to consider. Uh, not something you have to tailor your composition around, but, you know, Azir is not really a bad pick anyway to begin with. Faker's Azir also pretty darn good. But they're gonna see, yeah, they still do want to wait to see Sasson's pick before picking something for Faker, because Faker definitely a player who can make huge advantages out of the lane advantage he can get in 1v1s. All right, so the question now remains, is Faker going to play Lulu with this Lucian? Because that is a strategy that SKT likes to utilize when they have the opportunity. And they're going for that lane bully lane of Lucian into Sivir, where you can kind of abuse Sivir's lower range with your passive and take an early advantage that way. Not going to be barred. We already have the Nautilus in this game, so. Nautilus top, man. It's coming. Almost game last game. <laughs> so we've already been there. It wasn't good, Chobra. We're not we're not going back to the old ways of the Nautilus top, Trace. Ah, uh, the Nautilus top and Akali support, of course, a classic. <laughs> and yeah, I think that Spenu taking the Lulu away is a good call right here because SK Telecom may want to select that champion. It is a very safe mid laner. No matter what Faker throws at you, does have some nice bullying potential early on. And they're going to take Kennen top lane. Whoa, okay. All right, taking that to try to punish Rumble for his melee range. Of course, you can get away from ganks pretty easily yourself, and not too much gank pressure anyway from Nunu, as you don't have a stun. Yeah, the problem with Kennen is that if SK Telecom decides to lane swap, which they don't want to do because they have the Lucian into the Sivir, but Kennen is a top laner that can be punished in those lane swap situations. And to be fair, we also technically don't know who's going top and who's going mid. Both are potential oh, options. Yeah. So a bit of a flex pick right there. That's probably what SK Telecom is thinking about right now, trying to get something that would be good into either of these matchups. It's gonna be mid rumble. Oh man. I don't know. Not too convinced. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the mid Ezreal. Good against anyone, especially when you can just get all your farm from the side lanes as Faker. <laughs> That's right. So going back to the uh, SK Telecom Classic, something that they've been playing so frequently in 2015, mid Ezreal double AD composition. And I love the Ezreal Rumble combo because you can just melt someone's backline instantly with True yeah. Shot Barrage and Equalizer. It just bypasses all of their tanks immediately, hits the, onto their carries, and is very problematic to deal with, especially against the squishier composition that this Spenu Sonic Boom team will be running. And all they have to do is zone out the Sivir and there's only magic damage left. So MR going to be very useful for SK Telecom. Imagine we'll see Marin build that Abyssal Scepter first in this situation. And they'll be very powerful in terms of sieges in the mid game. And now that new new pick going to do double duty. That's true. Very nice composition from SK Telecom. Spenu looking for that primary engage. A lot of their composition is going to depend on whether Sejuani can hit those ults so Kennen can get the follow-up. But they have yeah. tons of speed again. And if SK Telecom is as lackadaisical about setting up and grouping as a team around those dragons, Spenu can certainly punish even harder with this composition than the one they ran last game. Yeah, I mean, with On the Hunt, they can really group up and just get that hard engage I like they it. want. I like it. I think they identified the weakness that SKT had and now are even going even harder in that direction. Well, game two between SKT and Spenu. SKT leading 1-0. Let's get into the game. And last year for Dong Jun, <laughs> the commentator for the Korean cast. Really? <laughs> yep. It was, it was T1 fighting, Spenu fighting, and Dong Jun fighting. <laughs> Where's my Monty fighting chair? Will you chair for me, Chobra? All right, Monty fighting. Thank you. All right, we're all even now. <laughs> you don't get a chair because you're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, that's pretty harsh. First I cast 12 hours of solo cast, and now I don't even get a cheer. That was, that was your punishment for leaving. <laughs> All right. Well, seems like we won't have 
too much. Well, SKT actually setting up for a lane swap, like you I suspected they might do, even though they also have a preference in the 2v2. Yeah, and this could be advantageous to Spenu, who does have that stronger dragon control, at least in game one. So I do see Bang heading up into the top side right now, and they're trying to deal with this cannon, keep him down, and keep the Rumble safe, because having Rumble in that cannon matchup is pretty unfortunate for Rumble. He's constantly taking those auto attack harass yeah. with the Doran's Blade. So when will the day come when thematic compositions are completely acceptable in the professional meta, like all Yordles? Well, remember that actually Frost, back in the day, played an all ninja composition at an international event. Oh, that's true. So they they've been oh. trying. And, you know, even SK Telecom at All Stars in 2014. They did play. Uh, they played for skins. That's so true. We do have this. Korean teams like to style with. Uh, <laughs> with uh, thematic compositions. One day a Moo will return in the jungle and we'll have all your dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud Templar <laughs> comes back into the scene as a player. <laughs> all right, so Mara just gonna tag alongside Bengi for a little while as the lane swap occurs for SKT, but uh, Wolf also just gonna leave to join Marn in the bottom lane as he goes all the way down the map. Yeah, pretty quick swap right here. They want to catch this wave down in the bottom side as it's developing. Meanwhile, Bang just perfectly happy, freezing up in the top lane. So quick recall there by Wolf. They're going to hit this timing really well. We see Secret keeping some eyes in the jungle right there, seeing if he can disrupt anything, but it's not going to be particularly perfect effective. Ooh, he stole one of the smaller ones. That is actually really annoying because you will not hit level three. Yeah. So Bengi. He's going to move on to his Gromp. I mean, he would have gone there anyway, but it's going to put a slight delay on Tupanky's farming route in the jungle. Meanwhile, Kennen only recalling right now, and he has to break that freeze in the top side. He'll feel comfortable knowing that the jungler and support are in bottom right now, so he can just go ahead and teleport, but Marin has a pretty much free opportunity to go back right now, so he can play a little bit more aggressively for this CS. Faker getting some wards into the river while Catch takes the crab, and Soul should be easily able to farm in the top side with that range and the unlimited shurikens that he has, that energy. So lane swap actually executed pretty well here by Spenu. A lot of times these newer teams not quite so good at lane swapping and these other complex maneuvers on the map, but really doing really well here. And Secret made the right move to make sure that there wasn't a trap being laid in the top side by SKT. And once he got confirmation that the location of the Sporting Jungle, just went ahead and had Soul TP up there. So nice work, Faker. A little bit down. Faker usually yeah. likes to build tier into Trinity Force on his mid lane Ezreal. Yes, Austin was doing a good job of trying to put some pressure down onto Faker early on with the Glitter Lance power. But eventually it will just even out. Assassin did miss some CS while he was trying to harass though, so. Nothing like, too exciting though. Yeah, not well. even <laughs> not even some good old fashioned new new counter jungling by Bengi. Yeah. It's, it's been quiet. I mean that small golem at blue. Bengi was like, nope, can't can't invade anymore. <laughs> Two behind. <laughs> Yeah, it's solo XP going over to Kennen as well, so that's going to be very helpful when he hits six first. Secret really wanted to get close to that wall. The dredge line. <laughs> well, he got his desire, Trevor. <laughs> All right, Pink Ward's going to see catch. Yeah, it should deposit be able to see that, that ward, ward too. And Secret's going to have to flash out his wolf head, but it's nuclear back. There's the exhaust, and nuclear choosing not to use flash. He just accepts his fate as Bengi shows up. And Marin gets a first blood. Well, right there, because Soul used his TP earlier, just nothing that they can do in order to go into that bottom side. And so, a little bit too pushed up, no wards in the river to detect that gank was coming, and pretty easy kill, actually, taken by SK Telecom. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been less excited about a first blood, given how easy <laughs> SKT made that look. I was just like, all right, it's, it's just going to happen. <laughs> And Secret actually going back in onto Mar with Catch showing up, but he's taking a lot of damage. I mean, the minion wave is there with six minions, so. Yeah, you really don't want to trade too, right? He's about, he's about to overheat with that flame spitter on. That's when Rumble's going to do a whole hell of a lot of damage to you, just in terms of those autos, and that's a board not 
going to be doing a lot of work. Now, SK Telecom's trying to push this up before they recall Szechuani wrapping around, but SKT knows what's going on. Secret totally telegraphing that gank, and of course, the timing right for Nuclear to be back in lane. Yep, so far, we'll take that chance to go back, get some items, get some more pots. Just going to go ahead and get a Merc Tread, actually, on top of the door and shield, and then pot and some wards to make sure he's safe. Faker has been zoned out quite a bit from lane. I mean, he's low on mana and health. Yeah, loses some CS right there. He needs to go back to pick up his tier and get it stacking immediately, however. And he's going to get Whoa. two tiers, because that's how sad he is. <laughs> he's like, no, not the wave. <laughs> And a Vamp Scepter, actually. So very early Vamp Scepter looking for that sustain. He just wants to farm up for a little while. He's concerned about the constant spew of Glitter Lances and picks him empowered auto attacks that it got him low in the first place. And now it's time uh. for Bengi to be a jerk. <laughs> He's not going to be too much of a jerk, though, with the Wolf Spirit. Yeah, catch. Smiting that out right away. Or early. is he? Oh, yeah, he's ready for the blue. <laughs> but we're going to see Sasuke go right ahead. Bang actually gets caught by Secret. He's going to have to flash and heal out. He's going to try to turn things around with the culling. Secret trying to block as much damage as possible. So Wolf's just going to turn onto the Nautilus. He's just going to get a headbutt back once again. There's Boomerang Blade onto Bang, but not enough damage as the Ignite goes down. And Bengi still trying to be a jerk. Never give up. And oh, go. he's setting things up for Faker. Oh, and he gets the steal. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, the last hit from Sasuke coming and helping Faker out right there. Yeah, how many times have we seen that? Faker with these blue steals on the mid Ezreal. He is so good at timing that ability. And Bengi there just giving him the eyes on it so that he had the right timing. Wow. And here we go. Bengi's not done being a jerk yet. It begins. <laughs> What you thought was yours, <laughs> it's not really yours anymore. Oh, poor Speru. That was a very unfortunate series of events. Bang. It was the only illusion of being caught out in the bottom lane, Chopra. See, being caught out <laughs> is really just a state of mind. <laughs> and when you have level 6 and the culling and your the enemy Sivir doesn't have on the hunt, and it's still level 5 because you were in a solo lane for longer, then uh. you can turn those ganks around. Oh, well played by pretty much every member of SKT, except for the quiet top lane. Making yeah, Mara, things happen. Do something already. <laughs> Go for that solo kill <laughs> with no ignite against the cannon. Cannon building that abyssal scepter first, and Marin just wanting to be safe, get the Merc treads, try and dodge some of the shurikens coming out, and have that. Wow, Faker. Okay, buddy. Yeah, he missed the cannon minions, so he was mad. He's like, might as well skip the rest of the minions just to get damage to Sausage. And oh, wow. Yeah, Sausage, Sausage doesn't have really blue, careful. and Faker does. So Faker's actually going to go for a dive here. He's going to heal out, and he's going to have to flash to get the kill. Will he go down to the... Oh, one last tower hit. <laughs> ah, Faker got a little greedy there. <laughs> but it actually is worthwhile for him because uh, <laughs> both players use their summoner spells. And <laughs> Sasson's <laughs> way happier about that. <laughs> Having a good time in the bit. But Sasson's the one who loses the most in terms of minions uh, uh, because the, was, the wave was pushed up to his turret. So it right. actually is worthwhile for Faker to make that play as long as he gets that kill. And also, he got the kill first, so he gets a little bit more in terms of uh, time there. And now Bengi just going to go ahead and get his red buff in the meantime. Faker looking to eventually pick up that Muramana. Yep. And Sasin gets to join the honorable club of solo kills on Faker. <laughs> After he's he actually, was dead. <laughs> he's actually pretty much equal to Pawn now because <laughs> he solo killed Faker. <laughs> that was a cute little dive. Yeah. Faker was pretty confident, but Sasin, I mean, flashed away to create some distance, securing the tower hits and Bengi. Showing up in top lane, they're trying to put some pressure down on Zasul because he's already at half health, and there's the ultimate coming in. They will both be stunned, but tons of flame spitter damage as Bingy takes the last hit. That was actually a really good combo from the jungler and top laner from SKT right there, just because when the slicing maelstrom went down, even though they got the stun, because he already had the snowball on him, he was just sitting there moving <laughs> slowly through flame spitter, <laughs> taking damage the entire time. So the stun really not doing a whole hell of a lot, even though he had some MR already. Still unable to survive, and Mara not having any damage really yet. Yeah. Well, 
Benki taking that chance to make catches, jungling even more miserable, stealing that Gromp. Meanwhile, tons of wards by Spenu around the dragon. They don't want Bengi to get an easy dragon out on his own. So trying to keep eyes on that area. Yeah, Bang going for a very greedy build now that he has an advantage in that matchup. Uh, with the kill that he got, having that Avarice Blade before completing the Infinity Edge. So he's obviously very, feeling very comfortable with Baker tagged by the last Lance, little yeah. bit of Glitter Lance right there on trying to Arcane Shift away. Now we may see some attempts in earnest. Wolf oh, actually Wolf. has to pop his ult. Yeah, but Secret's the one who's going to get caught as Edma comes in. But there's the ultimate on demand just to give Secret some time to run away. There's the slow coming in. And, oh, he still gets the hit. Doesn't get the kill, though. You have to be so careful about that. Faker will drop that True Shot Barrage at the drop of a hat just to help out his side lanes right there. Now Seeker is chunked out, but Faker's pushed back to his tower. A bit of a risky dragon attempt here from SKT. Yeah, catch showing up, and so is Sassin. So SKT is just going to back out for now. But yeah, Bengi trying to keep that dragon leash as much as possible to try to get an angle on it as Faker comes back in lane. And he's going to jump onto Sassin, but nice Glitter Lance onto both members of SKT. Sasson still takes a lot of damage. No True Shot Barrage to worry about, though. Yeah, no mana for Faker either. He's going to start regening it, of course, with that tier just a little bit. But Sasson still trying to push up the wave. Yeah, and he's going to stick around as long as possible. He does have a health pot going. So he feels pretty safe given the mana situation for Faker. Scuttle Crab going in favor of SKT. And Benki is going to come in. Say hello, maybe steal it. Yep, just going <laughs> to steal the Raptor catch. Not happy about that, but what can you do? And they're going to, I mean, he, he does have some time here where that smite is going to be down, but it's like by the time he actually gets it, nope, they're just going to back off. SK Telecom is done caring about dragons. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in going too far forward for that dragon when you have a gold advantage everywhere else. Also just going to clear out that ward with the pink. Uh, they still have vision in the dragon pit for a little while longer for Spenu as that ward in the pit times out here in a couple seconds. So he's just going to put out an extra run right outside. And there we go. Quick little pink ward clear. Spedo is just trying to hold on to their pressure in this game. They keep on pushing very heavily in the mid and bottom lanes. But Faker's going to try and take another blue buff right here as they see Sejuani in the bottom side of the jungle. So literally zero chance right there. And a parting barrage <laughs> to keep Soul at bay from that minion wave. He should still be able to get that cannon minion, though. Faker shows up with the blue, so Sasin knows what's going on. Spenu, meanwhile, is going for the dragon. Teleport coming in from Rumble, and there's the culling. The dragon still goes in favor of Spenu. Wolf is in the pit. Nuclear and Soul should be able to get out with Sasin right there. But Secret and Catch, although also both flash out of the pit. So dragon taken by Spenu. Some summoners used for that. Yeah, both TPs used right here, and Faker still... Oh, so flashes forward for the Slice of Maelstrom. He gets the stun, but there's Marin overeating, though, so he's not going to be able to catch it. Oh, nice headbutt into the knockoff, and Marin picks up the kill, and a double with the Flame Smitter. Wow, Faker really knowing his limits right there, having faith that his team could come back in on that one because Sol had his flash up and was able to get the stun down onto him and nearly end Faker's life right there. Faker using both summoners, however, does make it oh, out. Oh, goodbye, catch. One snowball, not even going to need it. He's just going <laughs> to slap him down. Just Yeti slap him. <laughs> Why would you use a snowball when you have a giant monster you're riding <laughs> that could just beat you into the ground, Chobra? <laughs> Let's see if this, this again, Soul goes forward. Does get the stun. But they really overcommit for that one with three members of SKT coming up. Wolf with a great follow-up with the combo. And then Marin roasting two members of Spenu underneath the turret. It's the new freeze roast method to instantly cook your food as absolute zero, <laughs> at absolute zero temperature <laughs> with Nunu. <laughs> Must be quite painful. <laughs> is it really absolute zero, though? I don't think it is. That would be far too cold. <laughs> They should actually just get stunned instantly and dead at the same time, if that was true. <laughs> the most OP ultimate in League of Legends. Binky doesn't care about Sasin. In fact, he's just going to chase through. Whoa, that's a lot of damage from that True Shot Barrage. That is a protection, pink ward protection True Shot Barrage right there. And it really <laughs> is just amazing how regularly Faker will use that. And because he has that blue buff, he's just able to reduce the cooldown so significantly on the True Shot Barrage just by yeah. continuously spamming his abilities. So 
No point in being shy because every time you chunk out a member like that, you're going to get someone a CS advantage or a vision advantage or something along those lines. So these little micro advantages that Fager gets with the True Shot Barrage out of Ezreal in the mid lane really do add up for his team. And it's the thing I really like watching most about Fager's Ezreal play. We've seen a lot of players try that mid Ezreal, but the accuracy of the True Shot Barrages from Faker really makes a massive difference across the map. So, of course, we saw him see, steal that blue buff earlier. Yeah. And he really can dictate where people can and can't go. And here we go. Well, Gang and Tomlin, Dredge Line not going to hit on tomorrow, but there's ultimate coming in from Nautilus. Mar turns it around with an equalizer, though. Seeker oh! will get taken out with the help of a True Shot Barrage as Catch comes in to help with the kill that will actually go to Secret with the Ignite. Yeah, True Shot Barrage rattling by for Faker as well, but that was a nice turnaround. Bang still just farming up here in the bottom lane. He already has that Infinity Edge. Pretty big advantage on Nuclear. Nuclear going to have to hug his turret. As SK Telecom in 17 minutes has built a six and a half thousand gold lead. It's pretty big. Faker, I mean, keeping eyes on the map with good communication to boot, is also able to just secure all of his CS and push up when he needs to. Keep applying that pressure. Not going to spend, you know, several seconds keeping an eye on somewhere else on the map. Thank you, John. <laughs> Nunu's just... <laughs> He's just going to stick around. The way he walks, the way he waddles, uh, tries to go for the steal, but he is going to chunk down both Catch and Sasin, so... Bingy will go forward and get that vision advantage here near the Raptors. Uh, but the pink will also get a race, and there's yeah, another question, ward. Questionable pink ward right there, while Faker <laughs> actually went into lane to push up that wave just a little bit more and keep on farming. Don't need to commit. Uh, we have a Manjais for Marin. Okay, it's going to be one of those <laughs> kind of games. <laughs> I, I, see I, how just it, I see how it's going to be Marin. A double knockup for Catches. Bang shows up, and that should be a kill, as he also tries to secure a kill onto Secret. Leaving it for Faker to take that kill, but Bengi's going to take down the Sejuani. Bang shows up with Faker to push down the mid lane, double AD. And Bengi still zoning out every member of Spenu, but there's a nice dredge lane and the slow, but Abso Zero in the brush and then flash out. Bengi's going to make the escape as Faker blinks forward and Sasin gets caught to Bang, and Bang not going to get one last hit onto Sasin. Oh, oh, wow, nice dodge by Sasin on that one. And Dredge Lane keeps Wolf back, no. and there's a teleport from Soul. Can he get the stun out to Bang? He does, but no damage to follow up. So Bang and Faker will just try to turn around. Bangy pretty low, though, so they got to watch out. Boomerang Blade comes down onto Faker, but he has Arcane Shift in secret. Where are you going without really much of a mission? There's the Equalizer. Oh, he gets booted back <laughs> onto the Equalizer. Everyone trying to stack Marin's Majestic Soul Stealer as the double kill goes to the rumble. Somehow, <laughs> Secret killed Faker in all of that what? as well. Faker had his flash up, so I'm not exactly sure how that happened off the screen, but Marin it's <laughs> finally <right>. arriving <laughs> with that equalizer, and Wolf with the punt straight into the flames. That is by far the super play of the week. <laughs> Wolf's punt into the corner of the equalizer. Ah, oh, this game is getting silly. <laughs> well, Marin has some nice stacks now after getting that double kill. So he'll be pretty happy as he looks to maximize his AP on his delightful Magi Soul Steel. So here's the TP that comes in. It's not a bad idea from Soul. Forces the flash out of bang. Heal used as well. But they turn it around pretty quickly. Faker tries to get a parting mystic shot. There's a boomerang blank, nearly takes him out. And here is Secret. All right, what'd you do, Secret? He probably just clicked R. Oh, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was like, he didn't It was the ignite. old flash and turn right there. <laughs> <laughs> down down by 7K gold at 17 minutes. Well, at least I can still, as a support, flash old faker to kill him. Well, nice. Uh, you got to take the, the, the moral victories while you yeah, can. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> SKT continuing to just harass Catch in the jungle by taking away all of his buffs. There's a lot of wards for Catch to take care of first, and Bengi's going to show up by then. Catch will just have to back off from the red buff, and Faker's going to get that just in time right after the smite. Good that was actually a really good smite yeah. auto combination right there. And here we go. Dragon, only second of the game, but first for SK Telecom as they continue to roll towards a victory right now. Massive, absolutely massive gold lead. And 
And on the hunt coming from Spender, they'd want to catch anyone on SK, but nice disrupt and the equalizer out to the absolute zero as Soul comes in, but he's just gonna get exhausted. Marin Hat didn't have this flame spitter on, but Bang has the damage to follow up. There's a flame spitter following through True Sharp Rush. Not gonna hit anyone. By the way, that was a 5v4, <laughs> but just the ult combo and that's one of the problems with Kennen is he's so item dependent, and you can see how little damage this Kennen is doing right now is catch <laughs> and Bengi chase each other around the jungle. Oh, oh catch can't find the angle to jump over the wall thanks to the Krugs. And eventually Bengi will take that kill as Faker just peacefully pushes up the bottom lane. Yeah, going to chew through that tower pretty darn quickly right now with the help of his Sheen, oh, maybe needs one more wave while well, SK Telecom is going to take a two-man, 21-minute Baron, I guess. Yep, I think he's just going to show up to consume a couple times. Then it should get taken care of pretty quickly. Yeah, Marin's also coming to join after pushing up that top lane. Spender knows what's going on, but Sasa's going to be met with a big surprise as the Magia stacks start to do their work. 13 stacks for Marin. <laughs> He has nearly 400 AP <laughs> at 22 minutes into this game. <laughs> that is one scary rumble. 7 1 and 3. He's ready for another one. He needs those 20 stacks. He's keeping himself in danger zone. Faker just trying to steal the red buff away from Bang. <laughs> Everyone in the audience got scared. <laughs> no, <he's> <laughs> <just> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't him. And Faker was toying with his teammates a little bit right there. Didn't get the red buff refresh. And Bang just. <laughs> Pushing up with these Baron empowered minions right now. Faker's taking everyone's jobs on SKT. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to push the R&D department of SKT, develop a cloning machine. More fakers yeah, all the like, time. Coach Komen can't do his job fully unless he clones me. <laughs> so. Well, this game's over. <laughs> it's, it's pretty <laughs> over. <laughs> The real question now is, can Marin get to 20 stacks? I hope he can. That's the dream. Now he has a death cap. So <laughs> actually, the completion of that death cap is going to push his AP. Uh, it's going to be over 500 now at yeah. 22 minutes. So he's going to be able to pretty much destroy their entire team with one equalizer. Yeah, that's pretty scary. But he's very far off. Doesn't look like he wants to teleport in. You don't know where your priorities are, Marin. Forget the farm. He's still stuck on the farm. You need the champions. <laughs> The dredge lane not going to hit onto Bingy. Don't think you really wanted to hit that at this point, but you kind of need to do something for Spin. Wow, look at the damage coming in from Faker with the Muramata completed. True Sharp Barrage is going to clean up the wave. Does soak it in with Spell Shield for Nuclear, but not Marin so much is for doing Secret. Krugs. All right, Marin. I mean, you had four <laughs> easy kills here with your Equalizer, but he's going to do Krugs as Faker tries to go for a kill. He is actually going to pick it up onto Soul, and SKT will just continue pushing forward to take the middle inhibitor. And then they'll go bottom to make sure they secure this game without any holes left for Spenu. The crowd starts cheering as the game pretty much looks like it's going to end because Marin's here and Faker's doing so much damage from the side. Uh, Spenu, you know, they might want to try to put up one last fight, but it's not really going to matter too much as Marin just <laughs> roasts Nautilus <laughs> with a single flame spinner, it looks like. <laughs> He's up to 575. AP right now after scoring that last kill on the side. There's just nothing that Spenu can do against this Rumble. Yeah, he's just looking Alt. for an answer. There's the absolute zero from Bengi, just keeping him in a band. There's the equalizer as he flashes forth, but his flame spin is turning his back. And Marin's not gonna be able to go for the kills as Bang and Faker come in and oh, the shutdown. The 20 stack dream is over. Spenu wins the moral <laughs> game, morale game here in game two, but SKT will take the win and they'll get a clean 2-0 in the first week of champion summer yeah and they really brought it together after su uh, summoning bengi and faker to the booth in that second game struggled a little bit in game one but that time really did everything just about as well as you could played a very controlled game and took a sub 25 minute nexus kill so really quick Spenu not looking too broken up right there. A lot of smiles in the booth. They definitely played pretty well in that first game of the series. And yeah, I think they can uh, be pretty happy. Yeah, of course, going up against the number one team from last season, always a challenge as a new organization here in Champions, but 